I'm Judy Shaw for NYSE Floor Talk. Joining me today is Mark Coffey. He is Group Vice President Supply Chain at Hormel Foods. And I have Mark Orada. He is Group Vice President Food Service at Hormel Foods. Mark, Mark, it is wonderful to have you both here. Thanks for joining me today. Good Great afternoon, to be here. Judy. Mark Coffey, let's start with you. All right, so the pandemic created numerous supply chain challenges for all industries. What were the unique challenges for Hormel Foods going into the pandemic? What did you learn? And how are you using that information to prepare for growth as su supply chains improve? Sure. Well, I don't know that the challenges that Hormel Foods faced were unique to Hormel Foods. The entire nation went through a number of challenges at the, at the start of COVID. You know, just think back, the last three years have been a blur. It was three years ago this week that we shut our economy down as, as COVID uh, ravaged our country. At Hormel Foods, we found ourselves literally overnight, consumer behaviors changed. Consumers, as the economy shut down, consumers quit eating out and they went shopping at their local retail store to feed themselves and their family. So what we've done the last three years, Judy, is we've worked uh, very hard to shore up this gap between supply and demand. We've shored up our labor gap. We've added new capacity, both internally and externally, to produce some of our most famous iconic brands. Think Hormel Spam, Hormel Pepperoni, uh, think uh, fully cooked entrees. These are things that are very important to our business. Now, what we've learned from all this is that we weren't prepared for this major shift in demand. So we clearly had to improve our end-to-end -end planning process. So when I talk about end-to-end -end planning, it's all about having the right product at the right place at the right time. So it's not any one solution, but we had to improve uh, you know, our process, our organizational structure, and our technology. So from a people standpoint, we've uh, created uh, centralized supply planning and we've upskilled our people. On a process standpoint, we've started integrated business planning and SNOP. And the whole goal of that is to look 18 to 24 months out and look what is demand gonna be 24 months from now and how are we gonna supply that in, into the future. And then finally, from a technology standpoint, we've had to implement new technology for planning. All those things are gonna prepare us uh, for events like this in the future and allow us again to have the right product at the right place at the right time. Okay. Now, Mark, yes. we know the food service industry was also greatly impacted during the pandemic. How did For Hormel Foods fare during the pandemic? And now that things are recovering, what are the things you're focused on to grow the food service business? Yeah, as Mark stated, uh, you know, three years ago, right about now is when the industry basically shut down. So uh, one thing we do at Hormel that we have is a real point of difference is our direct sales team and very engaged with customers throughout the country. Uh, so really from day one, uh, you know, we stayed engaged with our customers. So although the industry was basically shut down, uh, it's a very resilient industry, food service. So people shifted from having customers come in and selling them dinner to figuring out ways to set up food camps and, and feed people in need. Uh, throughout all of that, our team stayed engaged with the customers, not trying to sell them anything, but really asking what can we do to help? You know, what, what can we do to assist you? So through that time when business was very soft, we were still very engaged. As we started coming out of COVID uh, a few months into it, um, you know, we really uh, were in a position with our customers where they appreciated that we had stuck with them through all of that. And then we continued to ask them, what did they need? And so as we have always done, we tried to develop products, uh, you, you know, the fully prepared, fully cooked products that really aid them uh, when they're short on labor, you know, and, and short on expertise. And it's really to help them be able to provide the food for their customers that they need, you know, to, to give them the experience they want. So then as we continue to grow now and, and move out, again, we, we continue to look at different segments of the business. So we're very well balanced. So it's not just about restaurants, but it's about college, university, it's about healthcare, about all these different parts of the business. Uh, we're very well balanced. And so, you know, as, as different parts of the business uh, open up and continue to grow, uh, we're there with hopefully the products uh, that our customers need and, and the team there to support them. All right, now Mark, tell me, what is Hormel Foods doing to address sustainability and automation and how do these interests compete or work sure. together to help grow and protect your supply chain going forward? Yeah, well, first off at Hormel Foods, we don't believe that um, creating economic value and creating social value are competing interests. They can go together. So that's the starting point for this conversation. We're incredibly proud of all the awards and recognition we've received. 
uh, think best corporate citizen, most admired, most responsible. We're very proud of that. We document uh, the great work we're doing around corporate responsibility and what we call our food journey. Embedded in our food journey are a set of 20 qualitative and quantitative goals uh, that we'll achieve by 2030. And this is work that we're doing around our people, our supply chain, the environment, our communities. Uh, I won't go through all 20 of them today, <laughs> but I'll just talk about one that we're really proud of. And one of those goals was reducing our greenhouse gas emissions and lowering our carbon footprint. And I'm incredibly proud to share with you that in 2022, the goal was to replace 100% of our domestically purchased energy from renewable sources. And in 2022, we accomplished that goal. 100% of our domestically purchased energy is coming from either wind or solar. A great accomplishment and one that we're really proud of, Judy. Oh yes, definitely one to be very proud of. Okay, so finally, Mark, tell me, what are the keys to Hormel's success in food service and how are you differentiating yourself to be a leader in the food service industry? Okay, thank you. Well, it kind of goes back to what I said as we headed into COVID, you know, some of our differentiating capabilities that we have. But, but number one, I mean, we continue to have probably the best direct sales team out there and the relationships that they've established throughout the industry has been fantastic. Uh, from a new product and innovation standpoint, we continue to ask the customers what they need. And things have shifted, you know, over time, they continue to evolve, but, you know, especially since COVID and now most recently, labor continues to be a very big challenge, not only, you know, throughout, throughout the country in different areas, but food service in particular. So again, we continue to develop products, high quality products that deliver for customers on what they need with reduced labor. And so that's very, very important. And as I mentioned earlier, we continue to find new ways to service customers in areas and channels that maybe we, we didn't do before. You know, so again, college, university, convenience stores are a huge focus for us right now. We continue to build resources around that. So really it's about bringing convenience and quality products to customers in the best way for them to execute, uh, considering they may have no labor or, or less labor than they did before. So that's how we continue to differentiate ourselves. All right, well, Mark Arata, Mark Coffey, wonderful to talk with you both. Thanks for joining me on Floor Talk today. Thank Judy, you very thanks much, for Judy. Having us. Thank you.